Hey everybody, welcome back to Midwest Foodies Kitchen. <laughs> I am Venetia, aka Vanille. You know I go by many monikers, okay? Aaron Chanel. Hey, so we are here today at the Cheesecake Factory. That's right, the one and only world-renowned Cheesecake Factory. You can't go wrong here. You know, they have so many different things on the menu. We love pretty much everything that we've eaten. I don't think we've had anything bad on the menu here at Cheesecake Factory. Have you? Nah, but I think we kind of like, have you had any other like entrees or is this yeah. the entree? Well, we, okay, so today, well, I'll let you all know what we have, but we've had quite a few things. I've had quite a few things on the menu. All of their drinks are always good. The cheesecake is definitely good. Um, the last time we had the fried cauliflower, remember the Japanese oh, yeah. and Korean style mm -hmm. fried cauliflower, and that was really good. And so, yeah, so without further ado, I want to let you guys know what we have. Of course, we have a slice of cheesecake here. This is, oh, excuse me, my hands are so ashy, by the way. I just washed them. Um, but this is the Key Lime Mango Cheesecake. Take a look. You see at the bottom, there's a roll, a bed of coconut there. And then you have, like, a couple different layers of stuff, like the mango and the Key Lime. And oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That, this is my favorite cheesecake. So every time I come here, I definitely get this one right here. So one second, I want to get that back in our camera. Uh-oh, some technical malfunction. So sorry, you guys may not be, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. And so you want to tell them what you got? Uh, the pasta. Carbonara. Carbonara. That's, that, this is one of my other favorite dishes um, and her favorite dish as well. So it's the spaghetti noodles with bacon, peas. Uh, we had chicken added and uh yeah it's so freaking good and olive oil and then she had parmesan cheese put on top oh my gosh looks so good and i had the uh chicken madeira which is one of my other favorites um so it's chicken with mushrooms a madeira sauce and uh, mashed potatoes and you guys look at that they give you so much and then asparagus don't forget that oh yeah so without further ado we are gonna start because we've been waiting a while let's see Okay, I'm excited. Oh, where should I start? I think I'm gonna try the mashed potatoes first. Yeah. Are you gonna try some of mine? Yeah, you guys, I always pick like the least favorite. But least favorite. But that is so good. Oh my god, these mashed potatoes are. Mm. No exaggeration. These are the best mashed potatoes outside of my own that I've ever tasted. And as you guys can see, I wanna I wanna show you. They're um, made with red potatoes. You see all the red chunks in there. They are so good, seasoned really well. Mm. I love for potatoes to be kind of salty. Mm -hmm. And I can taste the salt in there. I don't know what else that is I'm tasting. But. This is so, this is so good. So delicious. The sauce is so flavorful. Yes, that's one thing that the um, Cheesecake Factory does is they know how to make a good sauce. And so, um, as you can see, the Madeira is the Madeira is like a wine, a wine sauce, a red wine sauce that they make, and they make it a, a little bit creamy. And they put it on top of the chicken, and they put mozzarella cheese. They bake mozzarella cheese on top, and um, and put the asparagus there, and the mushrooms. And see that? so I got some of everything on my bite. Y'all know how I do. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I love to get okay, so the Madeira sauce is sweet. The chicken and mozzarella is savory. And the asparagus has that, you know, earthy uh, and the asparagus and the mushrooms have a very earthy flavor, so it's a lot of different flavors in your mouth. And it pumps together really well and it, it makes you feel like you're eating something really healthy because it is light and pretty pretty refreshing it's just you know you're getting you're getting your your nutrients with every single bite so i love so this dish oh i'm gonna try yours go ahead can i try yours mm -hmm. i think the mashed potatoes favorite. are so good. It's my favorite um, place to eat. Yes, she said, I mean, you so can't go wrong with anything on, a, on their menu. Like, I've had, um, 
it's so good. The mashed potatoes are so good, right? Mm -hmm. I've had that. The, they have uh, these crab balls that are really good. Um, and another thing is the service is always good here. I've never had a, a bad experience. Have we had a bad experience? Not that I recall. Yeah, so we haven't had too much of a bad experience here. Um, it's at the Water Tower here in Chicago. Um, right across from Benny Hanna, which we're gonna do a video at Benny Hanna one day. <laughs> but um, it's it's lunch time, so it's not too packed, and you know, due to COVID, you know, a lot of people aren't aren't out, and it's cold outside. So we're here pretty early once again um, to one of our restaurants where we're getting in before rush hour. Uh -huh, let's see. I hope you guys' day is going great. Mm. That's good. I think that they need a little bit of salt for me. I like salt. Chanel doesn't. I like a lot of salt on my food. Pepper. <laughs> she loves pepper. You guys know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I used to get that, but it's something about the pasta that really fills me up so quickly that I don't really get pasta anymore. Um, but, yeah. Um, what are we gonna talk about? Oh, Takashi 6'9. Huh? The controversy with Takashi. Yeah. It's so crazy that um this young man is is like he's trolling everybody. And um I just feel feel bad. Like this is why I guess I guess he's known for that. I watched the documentary. And it made me feel like I, you know, I understood where he was coming from with kind of like the snitching and stuff. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job at trying to clean up his image and 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 giving us a picture, painting a picture of why he did it. Mm -hmm. But when I see him today and he's still trolling people, I, I wonder what his motives are. Like I guess fame and clout, but it's also like I feel like he's trying to expose people in the industry for not being as tough as they say that they are. What he's saying is basically these are rappers, these are artists. Y'all people are really listening to them and thinking that they're about their life, and they're not. And I kind of see that because he's kind of like telling the, the children or the younger people, like, hey, these people aren't like this in real life. And I think it's kind of good to expose that. But at the same time, I think it's very disgusting to talk about dead people. Um, and it, dead, dead people, like, why? Just, you know, that people are really sensitive. Their hearts are hurting. Their right, His mother. It, right. And, and when we say his, we're talking about uh, King Bun. Like, he hasn't even been gone. Or anybody. Snoop with uh, Meek Mill. He, was, he talked about them. Anybody. Don't talk about dead people. Like, they're dead. Let them rest and let their families heal. And so, I don't get why you want to even start that type of situation. But hey to each his own and i just wish him the best and hopefully he finds his peace and you know it's just like hopefully you have your security forever in life because i don't know some people get you never know you know some of these people may be about their life in real life or you know the people that's in their families probably aren't um you know don't care about a, a life or a career or life in prison and so it's just like tread lightly because everybody get caught lacking at some given point in their lives. And, you know, I just hope that they can find a peace and keep it as entertainment. But, again, once you start talking about death and stuff, mm -mm. that's taking it to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you oh. still, um, I used to, like, be more accepting of um, Takashi. But just talking about something so sensitive, it... Just because I just lost a friend. Mm -hmm. I just lost my friend back in September. Danisha. Oh. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and so I'm looking at it. I'm putting myself in the family shoes. Mm -hmm. If I was to wake up one morning and see that this, 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 this random guy just talking about somebody that, that died that was very close to me. And it's just, it's distasteful. It's, I don't know, it just shows who he, the per type of person he is. And, and it also shows who he worked, who he worked for. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, who would you say he works for? Is it an industry thing or or the devil? Like, definitely the de definitely um, the devil. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, Jewish people. No offense. Um, so yeah, I mean, because what else will possess you or 
um, entice you to, to talk about something that was so deeply heavy, you know what I'm saying? He was gunned down, right? And to talk about it as though it's some type of celebration or some type of yeah, but and I guess that is what the devil does. They celebrate death. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Thank you. That is what the devil does. He he celebrates death like he leads you down that path, mm-hmm. and it, it, this is is nothing makes makes that entity or whatever you want to call it um and i rebuke say the name of jesus <laughs> nothing yeah. makes that more happy than the death and your life being ruined and you ruining other people's lives so it makes a lot of sense that that that's who who he's he, who he's pleasing by doing it and that he is that himself and a lot of these people don't believe in god they worship money you know they believe in the industry they chase fame and they chase clout and they don't have any regard for any higher being so i i get it and so we're just on a we're getting caught up in a web of something that you know doesn't really have anything to do with us you know but at the same time i mean we're we're living on a stage in this world and we're all here together and through media we keep in touch and it's so easy to get into other people's yeah. life and business it, but it's like it's like they're they if we get too involved in it and to it feels so too much about it i feel like it, we can't get pulled down in that right to hell with them to be honest like we have yeah it's not it's not the fact that we're getting caught up per se i think that it, it hits home like that's like coming to somebody's house and saying hey you know fuck your grandmother who just died i mean mm-hmm. he's from chicago and here it is you're a rapper that just was were, was released mm-hmm. off of you know snitching. What I'm snitching and you're stirring up trouble like it, it's just like you're stirring up trouble that that you claim you don't care about but someone who has so much security would not care versus somebody who know that who know they gonna come in the hood who know that they will, they're gonna come down downtown and shop someone who knows it's just like he's riding off of black people in our image mm. and he's making a profit off of it why not go to your community and talk about the people that you know not right. talk about anyone that that's deceased but why not you know what I'm saying profit off saying your why, community why you're saying why why try to control the black community or even black culture or hip hop culture exactly but in the same sense you're saying that we're F us like you're saying Takashi you're saying yeah, the, y'all not nothing, y'all not nothing, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you. That's a new one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, but you're not. You're also showing us that you're a fan. Like you, you actually like the, the, the black culture, and you're monetizing off of it. You know. But on one hand, you're saying, you know, you bashing us and you're dissing us. But it's just pick a side. You know. Like I come from where it's just not cool to talk about that that type of stuff and to do that it's just so distasteful and it just shows who what type of person he is you know and if anyone out there that think that that's that's funny that's not funny at all it's like not. it's it's so sad it's so sad because that can happen to him that can happen to his brother his homie but it's like for what you know i just think that the whole thing is unnecessary yeah for the most part it's unnecessary especially go to the extent of being on the ground acting out a person being on the ground dead and this isn't the first time he's done this like he's literally constantly well i guess it's a beef that he's having with these people and then i guess he feels like he's hitting them as hard as it can hurt and talk about talking about talking about their dead friends their dead homies and you know just we see we know how that goes you know but he's surrounded like we said he sold his soul to the devil he's surrounded by plenty of security and police officers and there's something there's definitely for him to go to this extent i feel like there's definitely something that he knows that we don't you know and that's just what it is whether it be what contract he signed with them people or maybe he have a lifetime of security that was probably one of his you know and he's rich and he's rich he may have a lifetime security uh clause you know a lot of when you think about it, a lot of celebrities do a lot of look at politicians like the presidents and stuff they have secret service agents there all the time even after their presidency so it's it's definitely possible that he has a lifetime of security and so he's gonna take advantage of it he probably paid a lot for it and he's gonna take advantage of that lifetime of security so 
on to the next from him. I think today is like Bobby Christina's, uh, is it her birthday or something like that? Rest in peace to Bobby Christina, Whitney Houston's daughter. That was a really sad, tragic situation with, you know, so many of their family members dying in such short periods of time. It's just like, rest in peace, you know, rest in peace to her. Rest in peace. Yeah, so you finished, you pretty much... <laughs> Oh my goodness! You didn't eat the bacon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal her bacon since she didn't eat it. I'm gonna steal it and put it on my. I have some cool off that pasta. She didn't eat her bacon or her peas. Eat your peas. <laughs> the the peas make it so good to me though. The bacon. Yeah, nice creamy piece of bacon. Now it's time for dessert. Uh oh. I'm trying to limit my limit myself to one meal per day. Okay. Right. I have a training coming up. So. Oh yeah, she. You want to tell them about it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I have a training coming up in the next few weeks, in the following week or so. Um, I actually have a um, job opportunity um, to become a correctional officer. Um, it may not be the, the career that I choose, but it's definitely a stepping stone, just in the whole criminal justice department. <clears throat> And so I'm wishing myself the best of luck with that one. And so I have this intensive training, physical training that I have to do um, down in Springfield. So I'm just trying to keep, limit limit my meals to one per day. So hopefully, wish me luck, I can do that. Um, for the most part, I can drink no liquor for seven days. Wish me luck. Good luck, because we were just talking about how we think we're alcoholics because it's so hard to not drink. Like we're young. And we like to drink. We, you know, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed or anything. So honestly, alcohol is like my medication. It keeps my anxiety from going up. I don't encourage anyone to be like that. Like, but I've noticed over the past couple of years, I like to drink. Okay, I guess that's what happens in adulthood. Things get stressful, and some people work out to relieve their set. Oh, their set. Lordy and Swift. Some people work out to relieve their stress. Some people have sex to relieve their stress. Some people watch TV to relieve their stress. I like to drink every now and then, you know? Yeah. Okay. Right, well, I finished that. And I still have a whole plate over here. But I'm getting pretty full. Let's move this over. Um, you want to finish eating some? Okay. She's going to finish um, eating some of my food. Yeah, sure. And then we're going to... Uh, this is what the you guys came finale. here for. The one and only cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory. Uh oh. Stop here. What? Your food is way better than mine. Yeah, take some more. I thought she, y'all, she said she was limiting herself to one meal a day. She's I a one and a half. Luck. She's a one and a half already. <laughs> But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna encourage you. I love to feed her. I love to cook. I love to eat. So I kind of blame myself. Um, but yeah, say something for dessert. You didn't like the mashed potatoes? No. Really? You're not a really a potato fan. No. Nope. You don't eat potatoes like that. No. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move that over. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna save that for later and have food to eat uh, later this afternoon or this evening. And we're gonna go for the cheesecake. Is there another fork over there or a spoon? Uh, yeah, yeah. You want the fork or the spoon? Uh, I just use my fork. My fork. Oh, you just use that fork. Okay. Make sure you wipe it. <laughs> Did we get two new masks or just new? Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. I don't think mine fell in. Well, that was really nice for him to bring us one. Yeah, because I. I have realized it. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, dropped her mask on a, on the floor near us, and the server actually came and and gave us a a new mask. It was really nice. Not the server. I think he's the manager. So yeah, let's start. Oh my gosh, guys. I think uh, yeah. I'm just gonna take a slice straight from the top. Are we gonna do a thumbnail? We might as well do a thumbnail right here and right now, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. One, two. Oh, nope, not my coconut. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 
cool. I just feel like this is such a good, a big bite. You go first. You want to? Uh, <laughs> no, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> what does that look? Is that is that a good is is that a good or a bad look? Mmm. What do you taste? Like, what are the flavors? The flavors are so acidic. Mmm. From the lime, the key lime. Mm -hmm. So it just melts. Oh. And the whipped cream just tops it. Mm. It's like milk and cake at the same time. Think about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> That's me, a box, right? Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. I'll be back one second. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm. Okay, okay, she's enjoying it. Enjoying it a little bit too much, babe. <laughs> oh. It's so good. I'm sorry, y'all. It's so decadent. Oh my god. It's like I just had a full gas on. I'm is sorry. Coconut? Yes. Coconut is her favorite. I love coconut, but that's not even my favorite part about this. My favorite part is the key lime. And it almost tastes like orange. But it's mango. You see the the the, the um like not frosting but the glaze at the top? And that layer at the top is the key lime. And then the next layer is the um the cheesecake mango cheesecake and right under that there's a coconut layer and then the graham cracker layer oh my god it's so many different flavors in one it's so delicious it's just the right amount of sweet and like you said citrus mm -hmm. this key lime bar is so fucking delicious and i've had regular key lime cheesecake but for some reason this is so much better than that because it, it almost tastes like orange Okay, I'm gonna take another bite. I think I'm gonna hold off. You gonna hold off? Yeah. You don't like it as much as no, me. No, because I ate the whole pasta. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just too much. Up. My stomach is filled up. Okay, well, her stomach is filled up, and We're my not. stomach is too. Look, <laughs> my stomach is filled up, and I'm gonna take the other half of this and eat it later. So our uh, line is, mmm, mm -hmm. that is good. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. chop this off. No rush. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is gonna be it. Um, cheers, our kids. Cheers. 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 Okay. I let my pants down so I could get this digestive. Mm. I gotta close my eyes. I'm, I'm so serious right now. Mm. So good. But you know what? I'm not even supposed to be eating any of this because I just got my teeth white yesterday. And it was torture for an hour. And now they're going to go back yellow. They told me not to eat anything yellow, brown, red for 24 hours. And it has only been like 20 hours. That's my bad. Sorry. I'll drink some water, rest my mouth. But yes, thank you guys for watching us today with the Midwest Foodies Kitchen. We're going to go and do some shopping, look around. I'm going to later go and get some Botox. <laughs> I'll tell you guys about that um, on the next video. And so, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will leave you all a um, view of the restaurant. So, thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, now, ciao. Ciao.